Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this week's Clarity Soft training webinar. I am Susan Arnold, Implementation Specialist here at Clarity Soft. Today is Tuesday, August 25th, 2020. Our topic for today is a really exciting one. It's action plans and workflow automation. Um, by using action plans and workflow automation in your database, you can help to automate some of the processes that you may do in your business or organization. Helping to save time um, and perhaps improving communications amongst the users in the database. So we are going to take a look at, um, first of all, adding um, or just saying that they will help um, make your database better. And during the session today, I'm hoping that your brain will begin to think of really cool things that you can do to help automate your database. Um, first of all, some definitions. An action plan in ClaritySoft is a bundle of activities that you put together under the name of an action plan. So there might be three activities, there might be five, there could be 10. You bundle them all together under a name, and then you're able to apply the action plan to a lead record, a contact record, an opportunity record, or a project record. Now, the interesting thing is when you create these activities, and you will see this, you're able to set a time span. First, we do this within one day of the start of the action plan. Then we do this within five days of the start of the action plan, and we do the next one within 15 days. And so when you apply the action plan, ClaritySoft automatically calculates the dates and lays them in there for the activities. So what it does is it prevents you from creating the same set of activities over and over again to lay them in, say for a new lead, you always do the same three or four things, or a new customer, you do the same three or four things for follow-up. So the action plan saves you time there and saves your team time. Then a workflow automation, what that will do for you is it helps to automate some of the steps where you create a trigger and you say, okay, in the opportunities record, when I set the opportunity to being one in the sales stage field, that triggers an email to be sent to my billing department to tell them that they need to invoice this customer because they now have won the opportunity has become a sale. Now you also could take that opportunity, convert it to a sale record, and then do the trigger from the sale record. But it just depends on how your database is set up, okay? So those are the kinds of things that you do with workflows. So it's create a trigger that says, send an email to somebody or create an activity, or you can also apply an action plan with a trigger. So now we're gonna move ahead and learn how to do these things. And then one thing I do want to say that those of you that are here, um, if you are not an admin user in your database, you will not see these options. So you might have to talk to your admin user when you go back and say, well, I have some cool ideas that I wanna try and then sit down and work with your admin user. Um, it's also possible you don't have the functionality. It depends on what level of Clarity Soft you have. Um, and if you don't, then you would need to talk with your account rep, um, your sales account rep, um, to discuss that. Okay? But what you want to do is learn. All right. So the first thing that I want to do, I'm in the leads module here in my database. And let's say that each day we get new leads put in here. Maybe they come in using the web form integration, maybe you import them, whatever. So the first thing that you want to do with the new leads is to apply a set of activities to those new leads to say, okay, you need to, first of all, make an initial, you know, maybe send an initial email. Second, within so many days, you need to call to follow up on that email. Third, maybe you send another follow-up email. Fourth, whatever, okay? So that's what we want to do. So you can see here 
I have some new leads and I've already got a um, little filter created here for leads created today. So those are my three new leads. Now I could sit here and I could add three different activities for the first lead, the same three activities for the second, and so on and so forth. Um, and there is a list action for creating that, but I still have to create three sets of activities. I don't want to do that. I want to do it all at once. So I'm going to go to settings. And in settings, you will see action plans. And you can see I have a number of action plans here and you can create as many as you want. So you're not limited on that. And so I'm going to add a new action plan. You give it a name. So I'm going to call it new lead follow-up. And then you can describe what it's for. Then the next thing here, exclude weekends, because you can decide whether to exclude weekends in your counting of how many days out to do something, or you can include weekends. It kind of depends on how you think. I tend to think in months of 30 days, and I don't think, you know, um, in five-day work weeks. So you, we'll try it this way, and then you can decide. So you can either include the count of weekends or exclude them here. Enabled simply means the action plan is enabled and will appear in the list of action plans that are possible to use. When we come down here and we're going to add our first activity. So the first thing is to put in a subject line. So I'm going to just call this initial lead email. And then you can select the activity type. This will show you all of your activities, including any custom ones that you've added. So that may be the first thing you think of is what are the types of activities I need in order to build my action plan accurately. Okay, and then you can set a priority of high, medium, or low. Um, and then you get to assign it. Now here's something to consider. You can assign an action plan or the owner here to any of your users, but then that particular plan is locked in to that one user. So instead, my recommendation is to set it to record owner. That way, if I'm the owner of the record, that plan is, you know, all the activities are assigned to me. If the, another user is the record owner, then they get assigned to that person. Um, now, in some processes that people set up, the action plan might need that, you know, person A has to do the first activity in the action plan, and that person always does it. Maybe they're in charge of sending out a contract or something and getting it back. Then person B is in charge of doing the next step. So just think through, is it always going to be a specific person for the activity, or is it going to depend upon who the owner of the actual record is? Okay. Then you come down here, and this is where you set your start and your due according to the number of days. So for this new plan, for the initial lead email, well, I want it to start as soon as that lead record comes in and I apply the action plan. And I want it done within two days. So it's zero and two. If you want a reminder sent, then you can click here. This one I'd be a little bit careful on because if you have a bunch of new leads and you have other action plans with reminders on them, your poor sales rep might be getting blasted <laughs> with reminder emails all day long, which won't be very fun. So I'd think about this one before I set it. And then these two things down here, you don't really need to pay attention to. This is that category field that's in activities um, that you can't change. Um, and then this is a custom one I have in mind, so completely ignore that. So these are really optional. All right, so I'm going to save that. I have my first activity in my action plan. And I'm going to add a second one. And this one's going to be a 
And then this can be a call. And we're going to assign it to the record owner again. And I want this one to start. Um, I had my due on the email for two days. Maybe I'm going to make this, you know, with give them a couple days to read it and four to six days. Okay, out. Um, you should be doing that. And again, I'm not going to worry about these two things. Save it. All right. And then I'm going to add a third activity. And this one is going to be, this could be send a second email, do another follow-up phone call. Again, it's going to depend upon what happens with the person. But you want to make sure these are at least in here. So this could be, say, 10 days out, 12. Okay? So I've now added my activities, and I could continue to add more. Um, oops. Forgot to sign it to the record owner. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I've got it assigned to the record owner, and then these are my start and due dates. I have no reminders set. So once I have all my activities in, I click save. All right. Um, and then if I wanted to add another action plan here, I could go ahead and do that. Once you've added your action plans, as with most of the things that you do in settings in Clarity Soft, you need to log out and log back in. So we will do that. And then I can go to my leads module, find my leads that came in today. And you might have a person who's in charge of doing this, like managing the leads. They come in, you assign them to people, um, and then you could apply the action plan and boom, you're on your way. So up here, um, I have my filter for leads created today. There they are. I select them all. I go to list actions, action plan. All records marked as checked. I get the new action plan window, and then you choose when which action plan you want. So I have new lead follow-up is the one I just created. Then you get to choose when to start your action plan. Okay, and you can see all the activities dropped in here. It says whether it's a calendar event. Now you can set these to go on the calendar if you want, so they land on the calendar. You can also say to send the person, the record owner, um, an email. Again, I wouldn't blast them with that kind of stuff. I think you get too many emails anyway. Um, but note what happened here. If I start this action plan today, then the start date for the first one is zero days, so it's 8:25 done. In two days, 827, then 831, 98, 98, 924. If I come up here and change this, maybe the person, I don't know, maybe the person I've assigned these to is on vacation until next week. So I can say, okay, I'm going to start these on the 31st, okay, and watch the dates recalculate. See, it's now the 31st. 9-2, and so on and so forth. So you get to control when the action plan starts um, according to what's happening out there, okay? Um, and sometimes you may want this to happen. You may have an action plan that you only apply after a certain time, and so you can then control when it's going to start. Um, if I set these to be calendar events, then they're going to show up on the person's calendar. Um, but I'm just going to go down and click Save. So what's going to happen now is underneath each record, I now have three open activities. So there's the initial lead email, the phone call, and the second email, all with the dates there. So I, in 
once you create the action plan in what? A click to select these, list actions, action plan, select the action plan, click save, what, four or five clicks? I've just applied nine activities to three separate lead records, okay? So you can see that can save you some time. Um, if you create those, you apply them, done. And then where these are also in the activities module for the user, when the user comes here and has a filter of today's activities setting set up, we then have all the different activities should be here for today. Now my activities are really old and nasty. There we go. There are the three for today, the 25th. So these are the three that I just created. Um, then on the, the next round, which start next week, um, they'll be there. Now, one thing I want everybody to understand here, notice that all of these have an asterisk next to them. This means that the, um, record is a lead record. So I don't know, some of you may not work with the leads module, um, but whenever you work with the leads module, any activities that you create in the leads module will display with an asterisk next to it in activities. So you can delimit that or delineate those. Once you convert the lead to create a contact and an account or an account and a contact, that asterisk will go away, okay? Because it's now an account. But anyway, that's there. And if I look out to future activities here, I would see my ones for next week. So here's the second email, send second email, so on and forth. Here's phone call after initial email, those three, and then the second email. So all of it's lined up there and um, ready to go for you. So that's a quick way to create an action plan and apply it, all right? Now, what about after a customer comes on board? Um, maybe you want to set up some follow-up activities so that, you know, a few days after the customer comes on board, you wanna make sure you contact them to make sure everything's going okay, um, you know, then, maybe that's within a few days or a week, then you might wanna follow up again in another week or two, a month, three months, six months, whatever, so that you are doing a follow-up on a regular basis. Again, your salespeople can create these things and, uh, and do them, but that's multiple um, actions to create or activities to create. So we're gonna go create another action plan or at least look at one here. So I'm gonna go back to settings and action plan. And I have one here called new customer. So let's just look at this one, okay? So again, action plan name is new customer and you could call it new customer follow-up. Here I excluded the weekends, okay? Cause I'm going out pretty far. So here I have a welcome email. Um, I'm gonna show a welcome email a different way. So I'm actually gonna take this out of here. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove these two. So I'm just, again, how to edit, gotta know how to edit. So I have a one week check-in, a one month check-in, a six month check-in, okay? And again, you set what type it is. Record owner is the best way to go. And then the one week check-in starts seven days from the start of the action plan is due within nine. Then this is 30, due within 32 and 180 to 185. This is where I don't count the weekends or exclude the weekends because I can think better in number of days rather than trying to figure out. Because sometimes when you include the weekends and you go out 180 days, you end up further out than you intended to end up okay so you've got your count here i could add additional activities but we've got this 
Um, again, because I changed it, I'm going to log out and log back in. And then I want to show you this one because it has a little bit of a wrinkle to it. All right. So with my accounts, I'm starting in accounts and I'm finding the people that um, just came on board today. All right. They purchased. And um, so I want to set my action plan, my follow up action plan with them. Well, as I said at the beginning, you cannot add an action plan to an account. So what do you do? Well, what you do is you, I'm gonna filter here for my prospect list, first of all, because all my people that just purchased are currently marked as prospects, okay? And let's say that, let's see. This one and this one, these three, I really hit the jackpot today. I had three customers come in, okay? And so I first of all need to edit these to change them to a customer. So I select them, I go to list actions, group edit. And I'm gonna change the account type, which is down towards the bottom because it's a custom field and make it an active customer. Now they're gonna disappear guys because my filter says find everybody who's a customer or a prospect, so they're gone. No worries, I have another filter for, where did I put it? Oh, oh here it is, active customers, I'm looking for customer. Okay, so here are my active customers. Okay, and the other thing I wanna look for is the last edit date. So I can see the last edit date here. And if I click up here to sort, I can see my three new customers that just came on board today, all right? So I can say, well, all right, I need to apply my new customer action plan. So, I can't do it at accounts. So what I do is I select the three accounts, go to list actions and say view contacts. Do the records marked as checked. I go to contacts, oh gosh, I picked wrong customers. They don't have any contacts. <laughs> so no worries. So I would get my list of all my contacts here Okay, and for some reason, why don't I have the account name? That's weird. Um, okay, pull that over. All right, so I have a person for RAMVAC, but I don't have people for my other ones. Obviously, I would have them. So what I would have here is a list of my contacts for my new customers. Then I would do the same thing here, click in the checkbox to select them all, or if there are multiple contacts, I'd only pick the one that I definitely wanted to do the follow-up with. And you just go along and click in the checkboxes. Then you go to list actions, you go to action plan, and now I'm gonna pick my new customer action plan. Again, I can set what date I want to start it, but you can see it's calculating my dates all the way out to next February, okay? And save it. Then all my open activities are here. Bingo. Okay? So here's the one week check-in, here's the one month check-in, so forth. Yeah, this one's been applied to multiple times. You can see they're kind of <laughs> jumbled up here. But anyway, that is, again, very quick. I just wanted to add that wrinkle of changing the account record to a customer or a client, and then what do you do? How do you get to the action plan applied to the contact? 
you select those new customer records, list actions, view contacts, then you're, you have your contacts, you select your contacts, and then you apply your action plan. So that's action plans. Again, you can add them in opportunities. You also can add them in projects. Um, I don't know if anyone is using projects, but when you are creating a new project, you can apply an action plan or have it applied automatically. So it will lay, lay in those activities. And actually in the project module, there's a progress bar that pays attention to the activities. So if you lay them in using an action plan, um, so it's currently paying attention to those activities. And then if you had 10 plans, act activities, you complete the first one, it would say you're 10% done in the progress bar. When you complete two, you're 20% done, so on and so forth. Um, so that's there. All right. Um, now, what about workflow? Let's say in opportunities, I want to, whenever I set or anyone sets an opportunity to the one stage, that that triggers an email to be sent to our billing department. Um, to do the invoicing. Again, you might convert the opportunity to a sale in here, you know, but whatever you, the point is you're triggering something and you're notifying something according to the trigger. Another thing that could be done, um, I know a company I worked with a few years ago, they had one person who did all their quotations. So in opportunities, whenever they set the sales stage to quotation, then that person would receive an email to say, okay, you need to create a, a quotation for this particular company and this opportunity. And so that they never had to think about it. They set it to quotation, they saved the record, and then she was notified that she had this quotation to do. She would do the quotation. And I believe they had another notification after she finished the quotation to let the salesperson know that it had been completed and sent. Um, so the, these are the kinds of things you want to think of when things have to go from one person to another and that you can have an internal notification going on. So I have here, um, well, I want to do all active opportunities and I'll come, well, actually I, I shouldn't do this now. I'll come back to it. First of all, we need to go build our workflow. So we go to settings and under settings now we see workflow automation. Now with the workflow automation you can send an email so in order to send an email you need to have a template um, that gets attached to the workflow uh, rule. So the first step if you're going to send an email you need to create the email template. If you're just going to assign an activity, then you don't need to worry about an email template. Um, so depends on what you're doing. So we're going to create a template though. So I'm going to add a new template. There it goes. And you'll give it a name. So um, let's see. New op one ready to invoice. Okay, and then the subject line could be the same name. I'm just going to make it the same name. That's going to be in the email. Okay, then the important thing here is to pick which um, module has the trigger. So my trigger is going to be in the opportunities module. Okay, and then I would create my email and I could do hello and I'm just going to put in billing. You can put in anything you want. Okay. Um, it is ready. 
be invoiced, okay? And then what you want to do is these people need to know, um, well, what account is it? What opportunity is it? You know, who's the contact person? What's the amount? All of that. I mean, they're going to go look up the record, but this will help them know where to go. So what you can do then is type account, and then right here is a field that allows you to insert a merge field that pulls in the account name. And then if I wanted to do the contact, because it is important who the contact person is, again, you just start adding the data fields. And let's, I'll put in the opportunity name. So you're basically just typing the labels and then entering or pulling in the field. And then we could do the amount. So you get the point here of putting in whatever you need that's pertinent for the person to know. And then you could do thanks. And then you could pull in the owner field, which is going to be your first and last name. OK? So that becomes the template that's going to pull in for anybody that, um, you know, whatever opportunity record they've created, it'll put in the person's name. So then once I'm done there, I click Save. All right. Then I'm going to create my rule under Workflow Processes. So I'm going to add Opportunity 1, Send Invoice as the name. I can put a description in or send invoice. Then again, this needs to be connected to opportunities. That's where the trigger is in the opportunity module because it's going to be a change in the sales stage. All right. Then you have three tabs here. The first one is the rule. Well, what triggers this to occur? So what we're going to say is when the stage and it normally defaults to equal, but I don't like to use that. I like to use contains. Then I can be a little bit looser in here. Um, so probably a good idea before you create this is go look at your sales stages in opportunities and see what you have as sales stages so you know what the one that means one is. It could be contract one or it could be anything. Um, so you can say contains one, all right? The option then, you have five different options here. And these are described in the knowledge base. Um, if you go out to our knowledge base and look up workflow, you'll see a, de a detailed description. But this is saying once when a new record is created that meets the rule criteria. Well, that won't work here because my opportunity already has been created. And it wasn't set to one as soon as it was created, OK? Then this one is once when a record is created or edited and did not previously meet the rule criteria. That is probably what you want because you only want this trigger to go off once. You don't want it to, to go off more than once if you change the sales stage away from one and then back to, to something else and then back to one. It won't trigger it a second time. So this is usually the one you want. But then here's one, once for all existing records which meet the rule criteria, OK? That means anything that hits the rule criteria will trigger. Um, and I'll give you an example of that one in a minute. Then here, this is multiple when an existing record is edited. So that means you could have a drop down list of different choices, and you might edit it multiple times, and it could go back to the same choice more than once. Therefore, it would trigger it more than once, OK? And then this is multiple when it's created or edited, 
an existing record. So these two kind of work together. This is just when an existing record is set. I'm going to do it once. I only want the billing department to get a message once, not multiple times, and invoice somebody more than one time. So that would not be good. So then your third step here is the action. Well, what do you want to do? So here you click the plus to add one, and you're going to say zero days after the last edit date. Because the record already exists, you can't do the creation date. Okay, it's been in existence maybe for six months because you've been working on the opportunity. So it's the last edit date because that would be the date when the salesperson changes the sales stage to one and saves it. That's the edit date, okay? And you're going to send a notification, add an activity, or add an action plan. Well, we want to send a notification. Then you click on this little circle with the down arrow, and it then gives you the options. Here's our template. We have to pick our template. Now, when you click here, the only templates you're going to see in this list are the ones that belong to the opportunity module. Okay, that's why you have to assign the template to a module. So this is the one I just created. Then you get to send it to the contact person. No, we don't want to do that. The owner, that's the sales rep. Escalation or a custom email. So what you would want to do here is put in the email for the person in the billing department. I'll put myself in, okay? So we now have everything set. Um, and if you wanted to, you could add to give that billing department person an activity too, okay? You could click and add an activity. We won't do that right now. And then I'm just going to click Save. So now I have saved this, all right? And... Again, we need to log out and back in. And then I'm going to go to opportunities. And I'm going to do active for myself. So we're not looking at a bunch of them. OK. And then I can just kind of go along here. I can say, well, where's one that's I could sort by the stage here if I want, and then I can find somebody that was at a quotation stage. I'm just picking people just for random. So let's say this person here, um, Brady Architecture, just came on. They just won. I won that quote, okay? So I would click here to open the record, go to my stage, and change it to one. Then I go down and click save. Now, see the last edit date was July the 8th. When I click save, that is going to update it to today. So that's what the trigger is going off of that last edit date field. Okay. So the trigger should have fired off. And within just a few minutes or less, I should receive an email that is telling me that this opportunity is ready for invoice. And once I do it, I'm done. I can move on to what I need to do, knowing that the billing department is going to be notified. Um, Basically, this is how we do it in our own ClaritySoft database. When a new sale is made, we have a workflow automation that notifies 
Linda and myself that we have a new sale and it gives us the information and tells us who it is. There's my email. Opportunity one, ready to invoice was the subject line. Okay. And it says, hello, billing. We have one in opportunity. It is ready for invoicing. It's Brady Architecture. Contact. All the information that the billing department needs is there. And then they can go look up, um, look up the um, opportunity. Maybe they convert it to a sale record and create the invoice there, or they put it into your accounting system, whatever you do. Um, so that's how it works. It was just a few minutes. And I, again, I know that this is going to work. So when I set my opportunity to one, I can forget about it because I know the billing department gets this. Now, the other interesting thing is I have another um, um, trigger set up in here <laughs> that every time I go in, I get emails that this says the opportunity is past due on its close date. And I know sometimes these are things that sales managers ask about. How can I notify my people that they've got a close date that they've gone past? And so this is what you can do is you can set up a trigger for it. And I just got three of them, okay, that popped up because I went into the opportunities module and this pops up. So, um, oh, that's a new opportunity. That's the one, wait a minute, that's not the right one. There's another one past due. So this is working and we can go look at this in the settings. But you can see how this can ha help you get things automated so people aren't having to worry about it to send an email. It saves them time. So these are the kinds of notifications you can do. And what you, you know, just go back and look at your database and think about where are the places we get stuck, you know, or things aren't flowing and try to use those workflow automations to help you. Um, they work in, um, they do not work in projects, okay, that, that's pending, even though if you noticed under the drop down for email templates in the workflow, there's projects. But when you go to the actual workflow automation, it's not there yet. So if you need it in projects, um, let me know and I will poke the development department. <laughs> um, so that's there. But anyway, so that's that one. So it's notifying, that's a trigger. Um, now what can be done too, let's say, and I'm kind of jumping around in my database to show that you can do this in other areas. You could also create um, another trigger that after the billing department invoices the customer, and especially if you created a um, sale record, then you could have another trigger that after the, the invoice has been paid, you could have a trigger go back to the sales rep to say they've paid their invoice and so the sales rep then would send them a welcome email. Or you could have a welcome email template already made and then the, it would just automatically go. So you could do it either way. Probably the salespeople would like to, you know, put a little personal touch to it. So we could do that sort of thing. So we could add, um, another workflow and yeah so here's a new customer oh no that's not the one I want so hold on I know what that one is I'll just create a new one here real quick Did it go somewhere? There it is. Okay. So this would be, you know, send customer 
welcome email. I'm just trying to make the names different. Um, so this would be, I'm just going to copy this because this is going to the sales rep. This is not going to the customer. Okay. It's going to come from the sales module where the trigger is. And then you could go, hello. And then you could add here the owner's name because it's going to go to the owner of the, or, and here it's called sale rep. Okay. All the modules, the record owner is called owner and in the sales module, it's called sale rep. Don't ask me why. Okay. So we can go, hello, sale rep. Um, the following, I won't worry about. Paid, please send welcome email. So again, you would do the account and put in the account field. And then you can put in the contacts so they know which contact person to send it to. Um, and then you could put in the sales order number or something like that. So, you know, again, you get the point. I don't have to do all this and take up time. So you put in all the fields that you want and then they will know which order it's for and all of that information, okay? And then if I save this, go to my workflow processes, I'm gonna create um, invoice paid, Um, and then this again, the trigger is in sales and the rule criteria now is going to be the status um, where did I go? There it is. And I'm going to do contains. And I think I use the word paid. <laughs> this is where I never, whoops, if I could type, we'd be in shape. Okay. Um, the option is, again, once when it's edited or created. And the action here, maybe what we want to do is zero days after, again, the last edit date, Instead of sending a notification, we're going to add an activity, okay? And this is to send new customer welcome email. We'll make it a task to complete. All right. Um, you don't need a start date or anything like that because it automatically will calculate that date. And then the assigned to will be the assigned owner, not a specific person because it needs to be the owner of the sale record. And then down here is where you again would put, you know, send welcome email to because the person isn't going to know who the heck am I supposed to send it to and you insert the account, the contact, where are we? Hello. Oh, okay, contact, and so on and so forth. So you would insert all the necessary fields that they would know. So again, you'd wanna have the order number probably because they wouldn't know which order sale it was for, okay? And so at least that much would need to be in there. And again, you can put in what you want. Save that, okay? So this is gonna trigger a, an activity, not anything else. Again, we log out and we log back in.
And then we're going to go to the sales module. <clears throat> oh, here, I already did a filter. There it is. Okay. So these are my, my sales. And let's say um, right here, Brady Architecture was invoiced. So if I go in here and I update it to paid and then save and close it or save it, whatever you want to do, that should set the trigger. So Brady Architecture is now paid, okay? And I would go to my activities and refresh. Now, let's see here. Let's sort so we have the start date at the top. And there it is. Opportunity one, send welcome email right there. So we can send an email, we can trigger an activity, we can send an email and trigger an activity, or you can apply an action plan with your workflow automation. So hopefully this has given you some ideas on what you can think about and do. I have one more that I want to just show you and have you think about. I ran into this situation a few years ago. And it took it, the two of us <laughs> a while to think this through. Um, I have a person who is an event planner. And so she does all kinds, I mean, she sets up events. So people call her and say, my wedding is on September 15th or October the 15th, and I'm going to be at this venue. And so her job is to, um, um, create or, you know, hire the wait staff and do hire the caterer and schedule all these things. So her whole thing was she needs to schedule 30 days out. And so we were creating an action plan. I guess it was an action plan. That's it. Not in a here event plan. Um, where she has to do these things, but she starts 30 days out from the event. So we were trying to figure out how in the world do we do this? And what we finally figured out is that she would, she had the action plan, she had all the things. So like the day of the event is 30 days from when she starts the action plan. So what we did is we were thinking, we had to think a little bit backwards in that, okay, so today is, August 25th, 30 days out from the 15th of October would be, say, around September 15th. That's when the action plan needs to start. So what she would do then is go and apply the action plan on the 15th of September, and then all her dates would be correct, and the event, the venue setup should end up on the 15th of October. That's when you don't count your weekends. You just count the days. And so after we've you know, the light bulb, so to speak, went on in our heads. It was like, oh, yeah, that's great. So that's how she worked it out. So if you have to do something like that where you're planning an event and you kind of have to think backwards, you know, to figure out, well, when do I need to start doing these things? How far back from the event do I need to start to do my, my activities? That's how to think of it. So hopefully I've given you some ideas and triggered some thoughts in your head of what you can do and you'll go back and say, wow, I got some cool ideas today and you'll go back and poke around in your database and see what you can come up with. Um, one of the things I will suggest when you're testing, if you're sending the um, triggers to, you know, a specific person in your organization, either pre-warn them that you're going to send it to them or send them to yourself to start with until you're sure that you've got the, um, automation working and then um, you know then you can uh, practice with it and make sure it's working before you annoy somebody with a bunch of emails. Um, Tom yes this will be available as a recording usually it takes a couple days and it'll be posted out on our um, our web 
you know, our knowledge base in the recordings. So absolutely, all of our webinars are recorded. Okay, so hopefully you've gotten some good information. If you need some help, then you can either, you know, go to our knowledge base and look there or call support at 888-838-7487 um, extension 2 or email them at support at claritysoft.com. If you are in quick start with either Linda or myself, then you can talk to us and we'll help you. And then this is an important one down here, info at claritysoft.com. If you have any ideas or requests for topics that you would like to see covered in the webinars, I'm always looking for new ideas. I keep repeating the same things a lot, but the same questions do come up. But if you have some really cool ideas, thoughts on some things you'd like to have us um, create webinars for, please let us know. Also give us any critiques on how we can make them better. Always looking for that as well. All right, with that, I will let you go. Have a wonderful afternoon and rest of the week. And hopefully we'll see you in a few weeks for the next webinar. Thanks.